Taxes are a fact of life, and they don't retire when you do. With today's unpredictable tax codes, how can you better prepare for your income needs in retirement? Hello and welcome to Edward Jones Perspective. I'm Sandy Miller. Scott Toma joins us to talk about tax diversification and how it can help provide some flexibility in retirement. Scott, let's start with the basics. What does tax diversification mean to the average investor? With tax diversification, you're simply investing in accounts that are taxed differently. A good example is how taxes are handled with traditional and Roth individual retirement accounts. Now, when you contribute to a traditional IRA, you may be eligible for a pre-tax deduction, and you delay paying taxes on that money until you withdraw it in retirement. With a Roth IRA, there's no current tax deduction on your contribution, but you can generally withdraw funds tax-free in retirement, provided you meet certain criteria. Now you'll want to talk with your tax professional and financial advisor before deciding whether to invest in a traditional or Roth IRA. More importantly, contributing to either type of IRA doesn't have to be an either or decision. If you're eligible, you can own and potentially contribute to both Roth and traditional retirement accounts. Now one consideration is what you expect your tax rate to be in retirement. If you expect that rate to be higher, you may want to contribute more to a Roth IRA now. If you expect it to be lower, you may want to contribute more to a traditional IRA now. Regardless, by having money in both types, you could have more flexibility with your withdrawals in retirement. What tax diversification tips do you have for someone who's already retired or close to it? Well, the amount you withdraw from your investments may be the most influential factor in how long your money will last, but you should also pay attention to the order in which you withdraw this money. By using tax diversification, you can structure your withdrawals to potentially reduce taxes and increase your amount of after-tax spendable income. Now, as a general rule, we suggest taking any required minimum distributions first, because they're required, and then focus on dividends and interest from taxable accounts. Next, look at the taxable accounts themselves, especially those that may have experienced losses. After that, consider withdrawing money from tax-deferred accounts, such as a traditional IRA, and then finally your tax-free accounts such as your Roth IRA. Now keep in mind that this sequence is just a guide. The account you withdraw from may vary from year to year depending on your tax situation. For example, you may decide to withdraw from a Roth account earlier if this would prevent you from moving into a higher tax bracket. And it's always important to ensure you maintain proper balance between your stocks and bonds. Therefore, we recommend discussing this with your financial advisor and tax professional before implementing any withdrawal strategy. Thanks, Scott. For more information, contact your local Edward Jones Financial Advisor. And remember, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter.